Yeah, good question. Thanks, Sud. Um, obviously, each game presents different opportunities and uh, different scenarios for each individual. And I've, I've been pretty fortunate uh, throughout my career to be thrown into different scenarios in a game and, and been put under a lot of pressure. Um, from mine, it's, it's a really great opportunity for this group. We're starting from basically square one. We're all on zero points when you head into a semi-final. So um, for me, it's just about doing exactly what I've been doing throughout my whole career and, and this year as well and, and making sure I get us into a winning position. And I've got no doubt that everyone else in the team wants to be in the same situation where we can win the game and get us over the line. And does team environment play any role for you? Because we've seen you topping the charts last year for Brisbane Heat with the bat, then again for Australia, and now for Scorchers also you're at the top. Does change in environment play any role in your bat, the way you bat? Uh, not at all, I don't think. I've been really blessed with the teams I've played in to have a really high caliber of players around me that make my life a lot easier. Obviously, Sophie Devine's been hitting the ball really well, and Elisa Healy does the same up the top at the, in the Australian team. Um, it's been a really great year for me jumping over to the Scorchers. They're a great group of girls and also obviously led really well by Shelly Nishki. So um, I've been, yeah, I, I've got no complaints with where my game's at and, and my capacity can, to contribute to whatever team I'm in. Thank you. No worries. Awesome. Thanks, Sud. Lachlan, do you want to jump in? Yeah, thanks. Um, hey, Beth, um, obviously congratulations first up on making the finals. Um, can you just give us a bit of an idea of why this partnership with Sophie's gone so well at the top of the order. I mean, obviously you, you signed on quite early in the year in terms of going over to the Scorchers, but how much work actually went into making sure that partnership would create the success it has at the top? Um, surprisingly, not a lot, actually. There's been um, a few conversations here and there between Sophie and I, but um, it's been a, a sense of familiar, familiarity in terms of playing cricket with each other. It feels like we've played together for years. Um, I'm not sure that's something you can learn along the way or something you can teach, but it's just something that happens, I guess. Um, and Sophie and I are quite similar personalities. Um, we enjoy our, our time on our own when we're not at cricket, but once we're there, we really, we're really engaged with the group and engaged with each other in making sure we can get the best out of everyone around us and, and each other as well. So um, for mine, it's probably about the fact that we can be really honest with each other when we're out there and, and hold no prisoners with um, what we're trying to do once we get out onto the field. And then obviously a lot of the talk's been about you and Sophie at the top there, but I think Tanil and Sarah have been fantastic with the ball and sort of have had almost breakout tournaments for them. Um, can you just talk a little bit about them and how important they've been to your bowling attack? Yeah, they've been unbelievably impressive. Um, I hadn't seen a lot of Sarah Glenn and I hadn't seen much of Tanil Peschel either. So um, for them to come out and bowl the really tough overs in the power play and at the back end and, and do as well as they have has been really impressive for our group and obviously got us into really strong positions um, throughout the power play and at the end of our bowling innings. Um, I've got no doubt they'll, they'll do exactly the same job that they've done throughout this tournament tomorrow night and, and put the stars under a lot of pressure early in their batting innings. But um, they've been a real fine for us. And, and obviously, Glennie coming across from the UK and, and really new on the scene in international career. She's been one that I've been really impressed with, just the way she goes about her business and, and how much she loves the game and, and loves getting in the contest. And just one final one for me quickly. Um, obviously, probably disappointing loss in terms of that last game against the Strikers um, there at North Sydney Oval on Sunday. Uh, what's the headspace like and how do you bounce back from that? <laughs> oh, it's T20 cricket, isn't it? We, we've lost plenty of games along the way throughout this tournament, just as every other team's lost a few games. If you're going into a semi-final worrying about those, um, you, you're probably not going to be be too confident going into it, but we've parked that game, as I said before, um, heading into a semi-final, everyone's on zero points and you got to um, beat the best to, to be the best. And the Stars certainly have a great um, side out there and have been performing really well, but hopefully come tomorrow night, we'll, we'll put them under the pump and, and get a win on the board. Awesome, thanks, Lockie. Bon, do you want to jump in? Yeah, thanks, Patty. Uh, thanks, Beth. Uh, obviously, leading into the season, you and Soph, there was endless talk about the two big signings at the top of the order. I think it actually got a bit annoying for you how much we all <laughs> went on about it. Clearly, though, you haven't felt any pressure with the expectation that came from that. How have you navigated that? And uh, how pleasing is it to have done so well in, in partnership with Soph? 
Yeah, good question, Bonnie. Thanks. I think, um, yeah, I won't lie. It was a bit annoying towards the start of the season getting asked the same questions all the time. But I guess as a purist of the game, it, it's really exciting to see that people care so much that they they get just as excited as, as I did about being able to open the batting with Soph. So um, I shouldn't get too annoyed with, with how involved people get and how excited they get just like me. But I think um, what's really impressed me is you know, when you jump ship to another team, there's always a little bit of anxiety around whether you can perform at the same level as you did in the team before and to just come out there and, and do that and perform with freedom and, and play with someone like Sophie Devine, who's been hitting the ball tremendously well, has been a real godsend for me and, and made me sort of enjoy my cricket a bit more during the big bash. I, I tend to not get a lot of sleep during this time of year, but I've got a little bit more than usual. <laughs> uh, that's awesome and um, obviously two more um, triple bigger stands across the weekend um, you wouldn't talk up your own batting even though you've been absolutely superb and as reliable as ever so could I just grab a few words I guess on Sophie knowing that you won't talk up yourself how impressive has she been um, you missed her in those two games back-to-back -back losses and then no worries she just bounces back and you know hits an 87 yeah. right back in how she was before the back injury yeah, yeah, it must be nice being that good that you can just come in and um, take the game on after a couple of games off. But now I think just the way Soph goes about it, she's really composed and calm and, and quite clear on her plan and, and how she goes about it. Um, you know, she's sort of gone through waves in her career in terms of being really destructive and taking the game on and then um, probably gone a bit the other way in the last 18 months. But I've been really um, excited about the balance I feel she's found in her you know, batting and making sure she knows when to take the game on and, and when to sort of let me have a go. Um, even if she gets a bit nervous when I tell her I'm going to play a ramp shot, um, I think we've, we've got there in the end. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks, Bonnie. Gary, do you want to go? Yeah, uh, g'day, Beth. I'm just wondering, they, the Stars pipped you twice earlier in the season, both pretty close games. Do you take any lessons away from that? And they obviously bat pretty deep as well. So who do you look to, to target to sort of get a foothold in the game tomorrow night? Yeah, I think um, whether you win or lose, there's always something to learn from a game of cricket. Um, obviously, um, the Stars have played just as many games as we have throughout this tournament. So there's a lot of information out there for us to look at and, and see how we can exploit their lineup in terms of their bowling as well as their batting. But I think obviously um, their opening partnership is is as daunting as ours, I'd say, with Elise Villani and Meg Lanning up the top. So it's about trying to take as many early wickets as possible and really restrict them with their runs. And I, I feel like their bowling lineup hasn't been put under a lot of pump during this tournament. They've obviously got Nat Siver, who's played outstandingly again. She's a in a world of her own sometimes with how elite she is. And, and then they've got Catherine Brunt. But I feel like um, there's different ways we can expose their lineup and make sure we get ourselves into positions that we can take the game on. And the beauty of our team at, here at the Scorchers is that we've got a really adaptable and flexible lineup, whether it's with the battle of the ball. So I've got no doubt that um, you'll see that come to the fore tomorrow night. And do you keep an eye on the weather? I know it says it's uh, so far, it looks like it's going to be clear, but you can never tell in Sydney. I'm done looking at the weather in Sydney. I think it's um, stressed me out too much in 2020. So I'll, I'll let that one go and just um, show up to the game tomorrow night and hope it's clear. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks, Garrett. Uh, Scott, do you want to jump in and ask a question? Thanks. Yeah, hope you are, Beth. Hey, just wondering, I know you guys play so much cricket with each other, like obviously yourself and Meg and, and Junior, but there's so many girls in this Stars team who have played for the Scorchers before, you know, have some of the more experienced, or sorry, some of the Scorchers girls who were there played with them. Do you think that plays into any tactics or any, I guess, pre-match planning tomorrow night? Uh, yes and no, Scott. I think, um, as I said just before, like there's that much information and data out there. It, it probably doesn't matter a whole lot whether you've played with someone or you haven't because um, there's all this um, useful information on hand that you can get to sort of fine tune what you're trying to do and I think once you get to this point in the competition as well it's it's more about what you can do well and how you do your job the best that you can as a team and as individuals is what helps you get ahead of the opposition so um, you know it's one thing to to plan as much as you can but we don't know what the wicket's going to do tomorrow night until we get out there really so we've just got to adapt as quickly as possible and and try and get ahead of the game as early as we can. I wonder that from a personal personal perspective I mean does it feel different playing finals for Perth and getting to this point point in the season like obviously you, you've played such a role in building what the Brisbane Heat have and you know obviously their attempt to the three-peat this week does it feel different being at Perth and doing it there? 
Uh, not particularly. I think semi-finals are semi-finals for a reason. They're high-pressure games. Um, it has made no difference to to me as a cricketer. I still want to help the team that I'm playing for win, and and Perth is is the team that I want to help win this year. And um, they're a great bunch of girls, and I think it's just a really good vibe around the group at the moment with how excited we are to get out there and and really relish an opportunity to play under lights at North Sydney Oval. Thanks, Beth. No worries. Awesome. Thanks, Scott. Uh, does anyone else want to jump in for the first time? Nope. All right. We might have one more from Sud then just to wrap things up. Thanks. Uh, so, uh, like, Scotchers have been brilliant this season, but the way you uh, kind of made it to the top four was by a hair's breadth. So one, does that play your, in your mind that you just made it on NRR? And two, what is it like uh, playing against Star? So what's the mood, overall mood with respect to these two points? Yeah, I think um, first and foremost, when you come into a competition like this, your number one goal is to, to make the finals. And we did that. Um, doesn't matter whether it's by 10 points or by 0.5 of a net run rate, because we're here now and, and obviously four teams have gone home and, and we're one of the lucky ones who haven't. Um, we've worked really hard to get to this point. Um, and I think in terms of um, what we've been, been able to go through during the games holds us in good stead moving forward. We've been put under pressure a lot. And um, whilst we haven't sort of come to the fore in those situations, I think that will hold us in good stead tomorrow night against a, a quality stars lineup. There's no hiding behind the fact that um, they've had a really consistent season so far. But as I said before, we're, we're square one tomorrow night as of 7.05 p.m. So um, hopefully we can get on top of them early and, and get a win on the board. Thank you and good luck for tomorrow. Thank you. Beauty, thanks, Sud. Uh, Lockie Reid, do you want to jump in late? Sorry, Beth, I just wanted to ask just about the Heat. I, I'm sure you're not surprised by their season again. They continue to be up there and amongst it. Do you, do you keep an eye on them or is it all... Scorchers focus for you? <laughs> nah, all Scorchers focus for me. I got a couple of mates left in that team that I've been following and, and keeping an eye on and making sure they're all right. But um, as I said before, I'm I'm 100% Scorchers through and through now. And um, my first goal this in the next 48 hours is to make sure we get into another in, into another final. Um, Scorchers have played in a couple of finals before, and and hopefully we get there again, and I can help us get over the line. And is there any secret? Is it any different to the regular season or a finals just like the regular season games? Do you have to do anything different? Uh, no, I don't normally do anything different. I mean, you know, we've played that many game days in the last two years that they all feel the same. So um, it's about being as calm as I can for as long as I can and then pack it in for five minutes before I walk out to bat and uh, pretend like everything's OK when I face the first ball. So um, hopefully that's the case again tomorrow night. <laughs> Thank you. Good luck. Thank you.